Good morning, folks. Big news day. The sun erupts and Earth is going to get very lucky. We've got some very cool news articles, and thousands of you have already started flexing the observer's muscle in our challenge against the USGS. Stick around, folks. There is lots to see. We begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com and find a few dark coronal holes on the sun. We will discuss that in a moment, but first, we had a violently eruptive event come off the northeastern limb, top left incoming into Earth's view. There were two components to this eruption, which intensifies the shockwave impact factor. Luckily, it will miss our planet and go at our March orbital position, where it will directly strike Jupiter in about a week. In terms of X-ray production, the sun isn't. No solar flares, and we're back to a blank disk of a weakening star. No sunspots. Coming next to the solar wind, you see that the intense stream continues, but we have not had any more magnetic storms, and even the localized events are barely creeping up into disruption territory. We do have one more stream potentially set to hit today. Departing dark coronal hole may yet impact us, so we'll be watching over the coming 24 hours. As for the coronal hole to the left, it is part of the northern system, well ahead of the rest of them, and it may offer some seismicity as it faces Earth. We have been below average there for a couple of days. Largest of the last day was a 5.5 in Chile, but the most interesting area to watch is the North Atlantic. This ridge swarm is in day three of existence, and it is now spreading south to the Portuguese islands. Let's go to our top articles. This one out of Arizona State claims two massive blobs are sitting on the mantle on opposite sides of the globe, and they have no idea what they're made of. They just know that our understanding is going to change. Then this. Boy, the USGS is having a rough month, aren't they? I can promise you this. The best way to divert attention away from this black mark on the organization would be to make a splash of our academic challenge to them regarding earthquakes. More on that in a moment because things are heating up. This photo pretty much sums up the California wildfire situation. Nothing in the region is unaffected and it rages on. Across the country in West Virginia, the flooding continued from the storms hitting the area the last few days and at least 20 people have died in the emergency. Just a reminder folks, if you supported the Disaster Prediction app, you should have gotten your reward survey, assuming you chose a reward. If you can't find it, please log on to Kickstarter and you should find the reward you chose listed and the survey along with it there. If you are quite astute, you may have noticed the featured article has changed over at spaceweathernews.com. Those videos we made, now in article form. And folks, if you have watched or are willing to watch one of the videos there and think you see what we see, then by all means, let's flex our group's muscle and share this one across the world this weekend. Speaking of the weekend, it is Saturday, so our weekly podcast, Fly on the Wall, will post in a few hours at suspiciousobservers.org under the members' content. Membership is just $4 a month, and there are hundreds of hours of material. Last but not least, folks, there are a handful of VIP tickets left for the conference. The observers will descend on Albuquerque, New Mexico in a little over nine months. We've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. That article is one click away and the address is spaceweathernews.com slash challenge. Easy enough to remember. It's 3.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.